Godzilla Dominion really shakes things up, doing something the movies just don't. It kicks the boring humans to the curb and focuses only on the monsters. In fact, the comic has been written from Godzilla's perspective as he faces various monsters like Behemoth, Tiamat, etc., which feels like an epic monster documentary. No boring human drama, just pure titan action. In this video, we will explore Godzilla Dominion, a comic that serves as a prequel to Godzilla vs. Kong. So, what I'll do is, I'll explore the story and get into the Titan descriptions as and when they appear. We got several of these bad boys lined up, so hang on with us. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Godzilla vs. Scylla In the depths of the ocean near Savannah, Georgia, Godzilla was doing his usual patrol when he stumbled upon a situation that could have escalated into a full-blown mess if he did not intervene. The U.S. Coast Guard was in a fierce battle with Scylla, a massive titan who once bowed to Big G. Monster Description Scylla This titan was in the Arizona desert when Monarch stumbled upon her. They built Outpost 55 right there. She owes her name to Homer's Odyssey, after a legendary sea monster that appeared in the said epic. There's a theory that the Moai statues on Easter Island were like ancient scarecrow, meant to keep Scylla at bay. While she's got bits and pieces that remind you of different arthropods, she's mainly a cephalopod. Think giant squid vibes. Scylla's a towering figure with a unique look. She's got six super long spider-like legs she uses for walking. Her torso has got this noticeable ridge and a raised spine top with a big curved part that's kind of like a chambered nautilus shell. Her head's rounded, sporting two eyes, and she's got these tentacles hanging from her mouth, giving off major Cthulhu feels. In Godzilla Dominion, they switched up her style a bit. She's got more tentacles, all thin and long, and her shell's different too. More curved and not as nautilus-like. Plus, depending on the panel, her shell size kind of varies. Coming back to our story, Godzilla knew Scylla from before. She used to be one of his followers. At least that was the case since she answered to King Ghidorah's call. But after his death, she accepted Big G as the true king of the monsters. But now she was acting out, driven by hunger. Her target was a nuclear bomb chilling on the seafloor. Man, we have left these nukes everywhere. Anyway, Godzilla understood that if Scylla got her tentacles on that thing, it would be bad news for both land and sea. As a protector of Earth, Godzilla jumped into the fray. As would have been expected, it got messy fast. Scylla, going all out, managed to stab Godzilla with her legs and even tried to blind him with her tentacles. Godzilla wasn't in the mood for any bullshittery or defiance, though. He shook her off and sent her crashing into a cargo ship. That didn't stop Scylla. She came back at him with a vengeance, tentacles flying everywhere. In the chaos, Godzilla backed into an electrical sign next to some oil tanks and boom, things went up in flame. With the scene turning into an inferno, Godzilla saw his chance. He lunged at Scylla, flinging her into the air and she hit the water hard. Just then, the humans managed to haul the nuclear bomb onto a ship, and Scylla, knowing when she was beaten, dipped back under the water. Godzilla knew she wouldn't be bothering him again anytime soon, but he also realized there were other places he needed to be, and with that, the king of the monsters swam off to his next adventure. Kaiju times three is a charm. Godzilla's been mulling over how things have shifted since King Ghidorah woke up and stirred the pot. Even with Ghidorah gone, the big guy's feeling the imbalance in his turf as everything's trying to find a new normal. Cruising through the waters, he heads over to the Amazon River, noticing the reefs that were hurting before are now on the mend. He's pretty stoked to see life coming back to the waters and thriving well. Then there's Behemoth in his own neck of the woods, duking it out with Omulok. Monster Description Behemoth The big guy was found chilling in Brazil, and Monarch set up shop around him with an outpost. Monarch agent Mariko noted in Godzilla, King of the Monsters novel, there are cave paintings of Behemoth that are like 12,000 years old. Now, Behemoth's look is something else. If a super giant sloth ever mated with a giant mammoth, the offspring would be Behemoth. He moves around knuckle walking, like an ape with his long, beefy front limbs that are way bigger than his back legs. His face is adorned with these mammoth-style tusks that point down, and his body is covered in light brown fur with a hint of green, like vines or algae, on his gray tusks. Oh, and he's got a row of tough triangular spikes down his back. Monarch says they're made of unbreakable granite fortified with metal and ore. He's got claws like a sloth and feet like an elephant. In Godzilla Dominion, they tweaked his design a bit. Now, he's got more human-like hands with thumbs and three-toed feet, kind of like a theropod dinosaur. Monarch tags him as a protector, just like Godzilla, Mothra, Kong, and Methuselah. He's a chill herbivore, loves a good grooming session, and isn't into causing trouble, just a peaceful giant doing his thing. Monster Description Omulok Omulok has got a look that's hard to miss, 
He's a bulky, kind of humanoid figure, but with four legs and feet that look like tree roots. His body is like a bunch of logs or roots all mashed together, covered in blue tendrils. Plus, he's got these big, dead trees sticking out of his back. The plant stuff that makes him up looks dead, too, and comes in a grayish-brown color. His face is something that you might see in a deep-sea documentary. Dark blue, fish-like, with two big yellow eyes that glow, surrounded by eight smaller peepers. Omuluk isn't exactly the friendly type, especially towards other titans, except Godzilla. He's usually hanging around shoreline, and sometimes he even camouflages himself as part of the scenery. Coming back to our story, things are getting tense between Behemoth and Omuluk. With Omuluk slashing off one of Behemoth's massive tusks, Godzilla rolls up in Behemoth's hood, which, by the way, is also healing up. However, Godzilla is worried that King Ghidorah's wake-up call to all these titans at once has caused a bit of ruckus, putting them at each other's throats. Behemoth, not backing down, goes for Omuluk with his remaining tusk, but Omuluk's got moves too. He lands a solid punch, sending Behemoth to the ground. Just as Omuluk's about to drag Behemoth away by the tusk, Godzilla steps in and tosses Omuluk aside. Omuluk gets the hint that Godzilla is the boss and beats it. Behemoth gets up, a bit roughed up, and heads back into his zone. Godzilla's feeling the exhaustion, but to make things worse, his lair, where he'd usually crash and soak up the planet's energy, is gone. I mean, Mr. Serizawa blew it up in the King of Monsters, so the big guy's gotta keep on trucking, even though he's running on fumes. The Murderfish Mayhem Godzilla's diving deep, heading into the hollow earth for some much-needed R&R. A lot's changed over his lifetime. Places that used to be hot are now freezing, and spots that were buzzing with life are now ghost town. He hits the spot where his lair used to be, a place humans made just for him, which brings back memories, especially of Ishiro Sirizawa, who sacrificed himself for Godzilla right here. As he's checking out his old digs, going down this massive staircase, he gets the feeling he's not alone, and bam, he's suddenly swarmed by these weird creatures. Definitely not local, more like intruders from deeper in the hollow earth. He clocks that these creatures are linked, like they've got a hive mind thing going on. Then he figures it out. The explosion that wrecked his lair must have cracked open something deep in the hollow earth, and these guys came pouring out. And sure enough, their big boss, a massive piranha-like creature, busts through a rock wall. This massive fish monster, kind of like a Dunkleosteus, ambushes him. This thing sinks its teeth into Godzilla's neck, but Godzilla rips its spine out, no sweat, and ends it then and there. With the big boss down, its little swarm buddies rush in to munch on its carcass. However, Godzilla unleashes his atomic breath knowing that these creatures do not belong here and must be annihilated. He rips the creature skeleton out, and just like that, the hive mind connection is toast and the rest of them scatter like roaches. But this brings another complication for Big G. Now that his one sacred spot is overrun and the Earth's energy he feeds on isn't pulling here anymore, Godzilla's gotta find himself a new snack spot. The life of a titan is always on the move. Monster Description Murderfish Genitor Now, this Genitor, the big fish boss, it's a sight to see. We're talking about a large, rough blue body with pectoral fins that have this striking red underside, each with three fingers. It's got a dorsal fin that's all red and ribbon-like, and its pelvic fins are long, thin, and match the dorsal fin style. The eyes are bright red. Instead of regular teeth, this creature sports two pairs of sharp, bony plates that come together in sort of a beak, and the tail fin is more like red ribbon-like flesh. So yeah. Godzilla had a bit of a surprise party down in the Hollow Earth, but he handled it like the boss he is. Big G saves a destroyer. Godzilla is under the sea, tuning out the noise and feeling the winds whipping around the planet. He's thinking about this one spot he could have called home if it wasn't for a rival who kicked him out. Feeling a pull towards the moon, Godzilla surfaces and scales a cliff, kind of reflecting on how the ocean once split his world into above and below. But now it's all one big playground for him. Now he's the king of everything. He gets this flash of Mothra in his mind, remembering the sacrifice she made for him. It's like Mothra's spirit is guiding him to find a new home. But then he senses trouble. Something's in pain deep in the ocean. Being the protector he is, Godzilla dives in to check it out. Down there, it's a grim scene. Loads of dead whales floating around. Clearly, humans are behind them. He picks up the scent of boats and oil. But there's something else. He finds Nakika, another titan, trapped in this massive net. She was just looking for a place to rest. And now she's caught up in this mess. Monster Description Nakika Monarch found this big fella dormant in the Indian Ocean around a Soviet nuclear sub that had been MIA for ages. They set up a containment spot right there. While studying Nakika, they figured out some wild stuff. This titan's got multiple brains and hearts, not just in its body, but in its limbs too. Plus, it can switch up its color and pattern whenever it wants, and it seems like it can regrow any part of its body. Back in 2019, Nakika and its outposts didn't have official names yet, 
In the Godzilla King of the Monsters novel, they describe Nakika as an octopus-like titan with this dense, curvy cone-shaped shell and the whole color-changing trick. But in Godzilla Dominion, Nakika gets a bit of a makeover. It's still a huge, multicolored, octopus-like creature, but the shell is gone. Nakika is mostly blue, with pink on the tops of its tentacles and light blue eyes. It's got this maroon fin on its back. Personality-wide, Nakika's pretty chill, but under King Ghidorah's influence, it went berserk and wrecked the monarch outpost. Normally, Nakika's just looking for a quiet spot in the ocean to relax and find some solace, like when it got caught in that. Coming back to our story, despite its usually calm demeanor, Nakika's got a rep as a destroyer in Godzilla Dominion. Its tentacles move like they've each got a mind of their own, which technically they do, and they're not exactly friendly. It's linked to this cephalopod monster from Old Story, blamed for munching on a bunch of ships throughout history. Bottom line is that Nakika is as smart as it is dangerous. Godzilla frees Nakika, tearing through the net. He's thinking, whoever did this is declaring war on the sea. They're like Ghidorah, just destroying for the heck of it. He spots a submarine nearby and lets loose his atomic breath, slicing through it like butter. Then he surfaces by an oil drilling platform, and helicopters start firing at him. But some monarch jets show up and start attacking the platform too. Godzilla dives under the water, positions himself below the platform, and blasts his atomic breath straight up, blowing the whole thing to smithereen. He surfaces, lets out a victory roar, and you just know he's not going to let anyone mess with his ocean. The final battle. After the scuffle, Godzilla's on the move once again. He's feeling pretty drained and needs to power up. He dives into the hollow earth, giving his dorsal fins a quick sharpening against the rocks as he goes. Coming out from under an ice shelf, he cruises past some humans and a monarch sub, passing the remains of a bunch of fallen titans before hitting his destination. He's got this feeling that his rival's nearby, so he lets out a roar to announce he's there, but gets radio silence in return. Then, out of nowhere, Tiamat, the serpentine titan, ambushes him. She wraps around Godzilla, dragging him down into a whirlpool, her scales slicing into him. Monster Description Tiamat This massive sea serpent has got this dark purple body that's pretty hard to miss. Along her body, she has these glowing fins and sharp plates. Her head's got a beaked look with bright yellow eyes and a bunch of barbells hanging off it. Furthermore, Tiamat's not exactly the welcoming type. Like most kaiju, she's pretty territorial, which was super clear when she went all out against Godzilla for stepping into her turf. One of her go-to moves is constriction. Tiamat can wrap herself around her foes, making it a breeze for her to drag them through the water. Then there's her scale, sharp enough to slice into Godzilla's tough hide. Tiamat's also a master of hydrokinesis. She whipped up a massive maelstrom to pull Godzilla down to the ocean depths. Word is, she might even be able to create water spouts. Underwater, she's in her element, totally dominating Godzilla until he managed to get her on dry land. Tiamat also has electrogenic cells. She can gather and release electricity, boiling the ocean, and even whipping up electrical superstorms. So yeah, she's one electrifying opponent. Now, coming back to the story. Godzilla headbutts her right in the kisser, but she hits back with this blinding acidic breath. Blinded but not beaten, Godzilla uses his other senses to track Tiamat, facing her as she tries to sneak attack. Tiamat doesn't give up though. She wraps around Godzilla again, pulling him deeper. But Godzilla soon learns that Tiamat's got the home field advantage underwater. He knows he needs to shift this fight to land. After a tussle, they end up in an air pocket, surfacing with Tiamat still clamped onto Godzilla's neck. Godzilla grabs her throat, tail whips her onto dry land, and goes to town, stomping on her head. Tiamat roars back defiantly, but Godzilla tops it with a mega roar that has her slinking back into the water. Continuing deeper, Godzilla finds one of his old hangouts, decked out with paintings of him and his fan club, but something was definitely off. His current rival, Tiamat, wasn't the first one here. He spots a skull from Kong's species and realizes it belonged to his old rival. Looks like Godzilla's found himself a new crash pad, but before he can kick back, he's got to call the rest of the Titans to take a breather too. Marvelous Videos is going all guns blazing into the MonsterVerse, exploring everything there is to explore from the past to the present and the future. You'll find Deep Dive and other videos on the latest MonsterVerse TV series, the upcoming movie, and much more. So if you're a Gojira or Kong fan, I suggest you stick around with us. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks everyone!